right, I'd like to call the meeting to order. Uh, I acknowledge that we are in Treaty 1 territory, the home and traditional lands of the Mission Abbey or Jibri, uh, New, Cree, and Dakota peoples, and in the national home of the Red River Metis. Our drinking water comes from the Short Lake Warrior First Nation in Treaty 3 territory. My name is Neil Harden. I'm sharing today's panel. With me is Diane Knight via Zoom and Richard Whitbread uh, to my right. The accessor uh, today is Roddy Montanilla and the recording the secretary is Stephen Lund. To the Zoom participants of the hearing, please note you are placed in the waiting room until your property is called on. When it is your turn, you'll be admitted into the meeting. Now we follow along in the City of Winnipeg's Water Revision YouTube channel for the hearing process. Once a host admits you into the hearing, please close or mute your YouTube player. You will then be permitted to speak with respect to your property. Once your hearing has concluded, you can leave the meeting. We will be hearing applications for revision of the assessment role in accordance with the Municipal Assessment Act. The matters for rich revision and request them in this bracket. In each application, and we'll limit discussion for those matters. The statements that are made at this hearing are sworn testimony, and anyone speaking to the matter must be sworn. The advisor that assess the comparisons of assessments of properties are not considered evidence of market value by the board. The board is appointed annually by council and is independent of it from the city administration. It makes its decisions on the basis of the evidence provided at the hearing. And issues are written in order with them being mailed to all parties as soon as possible. Please note that the board's decisions with respect to an application may be appealed to the Manitoba Municipal Board if the matter could be assessed value or classification or to the court, uh, court of Queen's Bench when I against the application of exemptions for taxation. Should you wish to appeal information, I'll do so and include the board's order. With respect to the hearing process, I will confirm the points of appeal with the properties to be addressed for each applicant on its swearing in. We will then have the assessor's testimony for the question the applicant may have, and the applicant's testimony for the questions. Each side will have an opportunity to summarize if they wish. Once all the evidence for an application has been brought forward, the applicant may leave. The process will repeat BJ on the docket today. The session will close after all the applications have been heard and the board will deliberate private makes decisions. You will receive the board's decision by registering mail as soon as possible. As informa information, I'll help turn to a live stream, recorded, and be part of the public record. We'll be hearing items three and four on our docket today. Uh, Mr. Lund, can you please affirm the assessors on the applicant's testimony to the first property, which is 1459 Court? Mr. Assessor, please state your full name. My name is Roddy or Rodrigo Pontanella. You affirm that the evidence you're about to give at this hearing is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Thank you. Mr. Alton, please stand. Please state your full name. Do you affirm that the evidence you're about to give at this hearing is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do that. Thank you. You may be seated. All right. So, as I said, the first uh, property on the agenda is 1459 Gordon, and the issue is assessed value. Uh, so, you can begin, Mr. Assessor. Okay, you guys can hear me okay? Yeah. Okay, so the uh, file that we're speaking on today is 22-281, uh, roll number 1205-247-9000. The address is 1459 Corden Avenue. The roll year that's currently under dispute or under appeal is 2023 with a reference date of April 1st, 2021. The assessed value that had gone out is at $742,000. Classification is 60 uh, for commercial property. And under the property description, you can see we have our parcel use code. We have it as a CMRST, as a retail store. He's fading in and out. Can you perhaps lean closer to the microphone? Yep. Is that is that a little better? Yeah, it seems to be. Okay, I'll, I'll talk closer. Uh, so we have a land area of 10,772 square feet. Uh, we have a leasable area of 2,585 square feet, three premises on the uh, building roll. 
So if you go on to page two, I have listed some of the images of the property in question. The first image is of the pad eye view that we have on our records there showing the property and the roll number, its relation to Corden Avenue and, uh, and the opposing street, Niagara, I believe. Uh, on the second page, on the third page, sorry, we have some pictometry. We have an overhead view of the property, so we can see the property itself recessed in the back towards the uh, back of the parcel, or the north of the parcel. Um, then we have the uh, uh, operations in the front. We have a north facing view, so it just shows you another angle of the property on page four. Following that, we have a west facing view of the same property. And then following that, we have some Google Street View images. This was pulled from the June 2021 map update, so it's a fairly recent update. Uh, and it just shows the uh, property in question. Uh, heading towards it, uh, front, end, front end picture, and then heading away. Uh, we do have some information for some uh, income and expense mailers that we had received from the applicant. And we have some lease information there. So we have one, uh, one lease at 1,104 square feet at $17.93 a square foot. And we have another one with uh, at 1,880 square feet at $21.54 a square foot. Following that, I've included some rent comparables. So I chose these uh, mostly for the neighborhood itself to try to get some lease information that we had on some net leases in the neighborhood. So you can see we have a range there. Uh, lowest is $17 per square feet, and then we go up to about $24 per square feet on one of the comparables. Following that, I did include some land comparables. Uh, the reason being is that the uh, subject property had gone out at land value. So the assessment that we had sent out at $742,000 was a land value assessment. So I did include some land value comparables there as well. Uh, once again, these are chosen for the neighborhood. I tried to choose them around the same size uh, but of course I had to use the data that we had on file and we can see a range there of $52.06 a square foot up to $78.24 a square foot. And then I put a little note there at the bottom on the subject property had been assessed at land value only using 10,772 square feet at $68.86 a square foot. And so that's how the model came out with a value of $742,000. We do have an income stream on it. So we do have uh, three PIDs, although one of them is a one square foot PID, can be argued it can just be taken out. Uh, but nonetheless, we have one, one PID at 1,480 square feet at $18.83 a square foot. And then we have another C2 uh, premise at 1,104 square feet at $19.82 a square foot. We have standard model parameters on there for the 2023 reassessment. So we have 6% for vacancy. Uh, we now have 3% for the expenses, $7 of shortfall. And then we put a cap rate on of 7.05%, which gave us a value of $628,000. Uh, so the following page there has a summary on the income value. Following that, we have a page on our cap rates. So it just shows the different uh, property types and the cap rates that are being uh, applied from the different um, valuation uh, experts as well as the city of Winnipeg. And then we have some municipal excerpt acts, I mean, municipal act excerpts, sorry, assessment act excerpts coming on page 11. And then following there, I have included the income and expense mailer for the year 2020. So it shows a full year of information on there. And as well, I did want to um, state to the board that I had spoken with the applicant and because we had sent out the assessment at land value, I was able to uh, offer a revised recommendation based on the income value. And that revised recommended value that I'm now putting forward is $628,000. So I do have a revised value recommendation of $628,000. Thank you. And, uh, and that's my presentation. How do you feel about that uh, revised recommendation of 628,000? I think it's very high. Still high? Okay, you can, you can still manage. Do you have any questions of the assessment? Yeah, so uh, what was uh, your square footage at 742,000 based on? So that would have been based on the, I have it in my brief there. If you just give me a second to go back to my. 
sorry, I'm just trying to find my, there it is. Uh, so that value had gone out at 10,772 square feet at $68.86 a square foot. We're having trouble hearing you again. Uh, so the land value that the area that he's speaking of, it had gone out at 10,772 square feet at $68.86 a square foot. No, I'm not asking that. Well, I'm asking what square footage of the plan area do you use to determine 742,000? Uh, I think I just answered that question, 10,772 square feet. That's the land, I'm talking about the actual air, leasable area that you use to determine 742. Well, the leasable area, that'd be with the income value, and then that's the value that I'd put forward at $628,000. No, but what square footage did you use to determine 742,000? Uh, 10,772 square feet. No. Well, are you, are you doing it? So you weren't basing it on market income then when you arrived at 742. The 742, as I understand it, was based on the value of the land. Yes, um, correct. And you said your comparables have cap rates here, and I don't see the cap rates on your comparables. Uh, typically for uh, market data, we usually just put lease information of the uh, rent rates. We don't put cap rates that are be associated with the comparables. So the cap rate information, if you want to look at that, that's on our cap rate spreadsheet table. And that would be on page 10. Okay, well, I had phoned you and asked you uh, and told you that I couldn't find the updated uh, market income uh, leasable uh, values for the properties on your comparables. And you said they don't update them until November. So how am I supposed to determine? Oh, no. So you're confusing what I was trying to explain. When the actual market income isn't uh, factual. So the lease information that we use has been from mailers that have already been entered all the way up until 2020. The question that you were asking me was on the upcoming business assessment, annual rental value uh, okay. information that you're looking for. That hasn't been released yet and it won't be until November of this year. So I don't have the 2023 rent rate information that you're looking for. Well, I, I explained um, that to you last time. Very, very many times I explained that to you that I don't have that information yet because it hasn't been released. Okay. All right. That's, that's, uh, that's, uh, okay. Well, one more question. When you based your land value, did you use my site assessment contamination into consideration? Um, so I'm not fully aware of the contamination um, issue that it was with the property. I, I was somewhat brought up to date by some of my colleagues that have dealt with this file in the past. From my understanding, the contamination has been deemed a level that is now not, um, not deemed to be contaminated anymore, I guess. I'm not really familiar with the exact um, details of that, but I was I was told that that should no longer be an issue. But I'm not really sure exactly of the details. So, and who whose name was this that told you this information? It would have been one of my colleagues. I'm not sure. It we I had spoken with it with several of my colleagues in regards to the details of this property. So, and what evidence did he provide? Well, I didn't provide any because it's not necessarily bearing onto the value of the realty itself at the moment. That's all. What evidence do you have to provide that? Sir, I'm not sure what you're asking me right now. I'm asking you what evidence do you have to provide the board that my land is contaminated? Well, I haven't provided any. I have no evidence in the brief in regards to anything. Okay. How, how do you determine it's not contaminated? Well, that's... How, by your say? That's not something that would have been determined by me. I, I picked up this file this year, so this is going beyond my time with the file. Well, you've, 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 uh, we've talked previous, the last board of revisions, you looked at this property. So you have four years to inquire about the contamination. So I don't know, you, you provide no evidence, you provide hearsay, but you won't give me a name. Who told you? I can't speak to. I don't find the relevancy to what the, the discussions that we're having. The relevancy to the value of my land based on contamination 
So you up your contamination, you're going to have your moment with the board to speak to it, speak to the contamination. I don't have any information on it. So if that's what you're asking me, I have no information on it whatsoever. I provided you evidence with the assessment, site, uh, the site contamination assessment. Right I took a look at it. Yes. yes I, saw it. I saw the brief. Yes, there has been an issue of contamination in the past. From my understanding, it's been resolved. If it hasn't been, you know more. It's your land. Okay, if, if you have evidence that there's a contamination with this issue, the board will certainly be willing to uh, will consider that. Uh, I've provided the evidence. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, any more questions of the assessor? Uh, no, I would be. Richard, any questions of the assessor? No questions. Thank you. Diane, any questions of the assessor? No, thanks. Okay, I have no, no question of the assessor. So, Mr. Bishop, you can begin your presentation. All right. So, Jake, I think you have, uh, we have your presentation. So, page one, uh, this is the roll year 2008. I'm just giving you a set value overview that you've done over the years. So the year 2008 re reference 2003, 1,356 were key assessed value was 267 revised to 185, uh, 85,000. Well, year 2010 reference year 2008, 1,356 square feet was assessed value 268,000 revised to 225,000. Royer supplementary assessment, 1884 square feet assessed value was 3.4 revised to 272. Uh, Royer 2012 reference year 2010, 1884 square feet assessed value 340 revised to 296. Uh, Royer 2013 reference year 2011 supplementary assessment from August 1st. 2013 to December 31st, 2013, changed to December 1st, 2013 to December 31st, 2013. One month only at 2,984 square feet. Seth Million is 489, revised to 352. Earlier 2014, reference year 2012, 2,984 square feet. Seth Million was 500. Revised to 352. Earlier 2016, reference year 2014, 2984 square feet assessed value was 567,000, revised to 396. Earlier 2008, reference year 2016, 2984 square feet assessed value was 553, revised to 440. Uh, earlier 2020 reference year 2018, 2984 square feet was revised to uh, 2,584 square feet plan area for usable and revised to 454,000. And I gave you all the uh, Board of Revisions revised decisions, assessments. As evidence for the past 15 years, 10 years, 12 years, whatever it is. And if you look over the years, it, it, it kind of proves that the Board of Revisions over the 12 years or 15 years has used my evidence uh, as after just you know, areas of market. So over the years, I did consistent with my my uh, market income approach and the board of revisions obviously uh, agreed with my my numbers uh, so i believe based on my evidence the assessed value i got 742 because at that time i didn't realize he had lowered it to 628 for 2023 reference year 2021 is unfair. And if you follow the guidelines under the definitions and legislation act, part 518 presumption of eligibility. An assessment is presumed to be properly made and the asset value to be fixed at a fair and just amount. 
where the assessed value bears a fair and just relation to assessed values and other assessed properties. And I gave you examples, and uh, I, I provided uh, uh, definitions and legislations, and it shows part five dash 18 presumption of eligibility, and it shows you the definition. And so, as examples of fair and just surrounding properties, so over the years, for some reason, I've uh, most of the assessors have never used comparables in my surrounding area. Never. I've never seen them use a property across the street. And I, I, I find that really uh, unwarranted because if you're, if you're following the definition from the guidelines, why wouldn't you be using surrounding uh, comparables? Uh, the size of buildings. Most of the time, they're, they're comparing the, the $2 million assessed values, uh, commercially built materials. My building was a, designed as a residential house, which I was ordered by the city to, to do when I built it. Uh, so the, uh, the cost of building my building compared to the commercially uh, built building is probably three times less than the cost to build that type of building. Uh, market rent per square feet. Um, this comparables are being used on high population, uh, high desirable areas, uh, which are why I'm bringing up why you never use comparables in my surrounding area. Uh, the type of tenants, well, the tenants that he used uh, on his comparables are Subway, Starbucks, which have been long term tenants who are very outstanding business franchise. So he doesn't, of course, list that on his uh, comparables. Uh, the length of leases, my leases are five years, three years. Uh, most of the leases he uses have been 15 years. Uh, the vacancy, I think, uh, I thought it was at five, but I think it should be at seven. Uh, the condition of the building, uh, if you look at my building, it's actually not completely finished. I have a uh, parking lot full of gravel. It's not big. Um, and the capitalization rate. Capitalization rate is, uh, is definitely uh, doesn't compare to my comparables. It's far too low, my, my uh, capital compared to any of the comparisons on the market value. So I'm just going to give you a rundown of my property. Um, the subject property is located in the River Heights area, surrounded by residential homes and retail shops. The property consists of 2984 square feet, which was designed to look like a house and build like a home. This building was designed, the sign was consistent with the demand of the city of Winnipeg planning department. The front of this property is on Niagara, even though the address indicates different. This was a challenge when applying for permits. The building bylaws requires a setback recording the avenue of 25 feet. Having this setback really hurts the retail business that have been leasing from the past years. The property is surrounded by a fence and a parking area consists of gravel. The front of the building is finished with recycled brick and the sides and back are finished with stucco. Some of the stucco has not been finished. The roof consists of that most singles. The doors and windows are PVC and the frame is two by six roofs. This building is residentially built by a total cost. The building was 135,000. 2984 square feet total cost of the building was 135,000. It was $45 per first floor building. And then I gave you a, a rundown of uh, the actual cost that I am here in the building from McDermott Lumber. You'll see that the, like, the total the total is a lot. Yeah. Or totals for 45,000 dollars And the evidence I provided with all the McDermott number of receipts. 
if you want to go through all the receipts. <laughs> So I use some comparables of my own. Uh, the first one being a lateral three port and that will see one unit building with a one story commercial, commercially built. The building consists of 28, 28 square feet in total. Now, if you look at the uh, Assessment, business assessment, it actually says only 1,730 square feet. That's wrong. You look at the uh, business details, there's two addresses, 1103 court. So there's two low numbers, one being in the basement. The basement is seven, the main floor is 1,730 with a basement totaling 1,100 square feet. The tenant has been at this situation for 20 years. The set value for 2018 was 359. And the 2021 assessment is 446, a 20% increase. 1436 Cordon Avenue, which is 1436, 38, 48, and 44. This location has four units. It's a one story commercially built with long term tenants, all of it have been leasing from 15 to 25 years. This building has a total plan area of 6,000 square feet and a land area of 10,830 square feet. The set value in 2016 was 918,000. And in 2020, the new set value was 1.243, an increase of 25%. 1431 Cordon Avenue, which is 1431, 33, and 37. This location has four units turned into three. This one story building is commercially built. The tenants are long term tenants leasing for 20 to 25 years. The land area covers 14,000 square feet with a plan area of 5,800. A full basement not included in the plan area. In 2016, the assessed value was 941. The assessed value in 2021 is 1.336, a 25% increase. In the last six years, these locations have increased about on average. 25% from 2016 to 21, which is a 4.3% increase per year. So, uh, as you can see, the business details of uh, property 1143 Cordon Avenue. Uh, in 223, assessment goal, the market value reference year 2021 is 446000 I provided the business details, which gives us a total annual rental value of 30,000 at 1,730 square feet. If you add the other thousand square feet, uh, you'll see the difference. Uh, and then, of course, the business detail will uh, provide two locations at this address. And then in 2020, assessment will reference year 2018 was 359,000. You all see that. 1431 Corbin, which is 1433 to 1437, the assessment was 1.336,000. Of course, I don't know what the assessed value is probably going to be appealed to, but it's going to be much lower than that. Uh, the total annual rental value for 1431 square feet uh, is 1,200 square feet. Total annual rental value of 19,380. And 1433, an annual rental value of 34,000, 2,100 square feet. And 1437 has an annual rental value of 36. A total, total premises area is 2350 square feet. And then 1431, Corden, uh, 
which I've just gone through. This is the reference year of 2018, is 813. And then it gives you a annual rental value. 2018 is 20,460. So let's look at the market rent value back in 2000 or in 2021. Reference year 2021, we have 1938. And reference year uh, 2018, it actually has gone down to 2021. Um, 1433 is at 37,000. And if you look back, it's 36,180. That's 36, 37, 20. Yeah, so that's gone from 37 to 34. It's gone down $3,000 in average after that. 1437. is 38,400. That has gone down. Yeah, so that's 1,000 dollars. I, I have. I'll be talking about it after. Let's see the actual leases. Yeah, they, they, this is all from the CEO. Okay, uh, on their website, they'll list what? Uh, uh, we rate they're using that we base our assessments on our, our assessments on actual actual leases. Yeah, and I have the I I have all that information. Okay. So fourteen thirty six Gordon uh, is uh, nineteen hundred eight square feet, and its uh, average rent value is thirty two thousand. Total rental values were 1440. 1440 court value is 24, 180, 1369 square feet. And 1444 court of 1300 square feet assessed value. The rental value is 23,200. And then I've listed the uh, 2018. Which was assessed at 841. The assessed value is 31,000 RV or V value with the uh, 1900 square feet. Uh, 1438 Gordon is 22,380. The total square feet is 1217. And uh, 23,100 ARV. At 1369 square feet. And then 1444 for an ARD of 22,200 at 1300 square feet. So I'm just going to kind of go through the comparables, uh, what they consist of. So 1436, 1438, 1440, and 1444 Corbin. Total assessed value is 12.43 million. Plan area 6,000, plan area 10,830. Assessed value for 2018 was 918,000, 2020, 841. It actually went down. And then 2023, 1.43. The average rental value. In 2018 was at $15 a square feet in square foot with an 8.5% gap rate. 2020 was 14.25 a square foot 
with a 9.25 percent gap rate. And then in 2023, square footage is 1483 a square foot at a 7.25 percent gap rate. And if you do the calculation, it will be to exactly what, what the assessed value would assess that. 1431, 1433, and 1437, total assessed value is 1.336,000. Plan area 5,800 square feet, plan area 14,000 square feet. Assessed values in 2018 is at 724,000. This average rental value is twelve dollars a square foot. Capitalization is nine percent. Two thousand twenty. Now you got to remember, they're not actually including the uh, the base rent, the rental or uh, leaseable area and the base rent In two thousand twenty, eight hundred thirteen thousand at twelve dollars and fifty cents a square foot, with a cap rate of eight point seven five percent. And at two thousand twenty three. 1.336,000, fifteen dollars a square foot with us. I know color. Thirty. Um, where was it? Uh, 2023. Fifteen dollars a square foot with a seven percent cap rate. 1103 Corton Avenue, total assessed value at 446,000, plan area 2828 square feet, plan area 3,000 square feet. Assessed values in 2018 is 302. An average rental value of $9 a square foot with an 8.25% cap rate. 2020, 359,000. Cap rate, uh, average rental value at 9.75 per square foot. 8.5%. At 2023, 446,000 on a 9.75 square foot with a 7% cap rate. The average, the average rental value is $12.50 a square foot. The average cap rate is 7.125%. So I did an assessment market value comparison, which is page seven. Okay, just um, for your information, the, the board doesn't consider comparisons of assessed values and other deliberations to have a uh, court decisions that uh, uh, we should definitely cannot do that. I'm not you, well, I'm, 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 I'm providing evidence of uh, uh, average medical value for square foot and the cap rates. The cap rates determine the way the assessment determines the value. Of my own, of my property, he used an average rental value and a cap rate to determine my land value. That's what I'm doing here. I'm using the market rental approach. But they have to be actual leases and actual sales to determine the cap rate. There is no sales tax. That's why he never used anything in his uh, 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 sales report. There is no sales matter. It, and the reference here is 2021. The yeah. land references here is for 2015. If you want, I can go back to 2002. I mean, if he can use reference years any year he wants, why, why can't I use the reference year maybe back in 1998? Well, I think it goes to the end of the way you Yeah. No, I'm just saying, though, no, reference year is 2021. I'm using, if you do my calculations, it, it gives you the exact assessed value uh, of the lack. It's their assessed value. It's based on the uh, market. Go to an approach. Right. I mean, the if they are if they are using the actual rental, uh, uh, this this is the actual rental per square foot is what they're renting the building for to determine that land assessment. So are they using the the uh, the actual lease agreements or are they actually that's based on my uh, numbers? That's what it works out to fifteen dollars a square foot. The issue is we don't know what they're basing the rental rates on. So it shouldn't be a provided evidence to to show. 
He has a parable. I don't see any evidence where he uses, he shows us uh, what the actual research looks like, what it shows. How am I supposed to argue with that? Okay, well, this is the only way for me to determine, unless I go to the owner, business owner, and ask to see the lease agreements. This is the only way I can determine the assessment, and that's based on market control, approach, which is per square foot. So this is a, this is factual. This is evidence to prove that they're basing their values at fifteen dollars a square foot. Uh, so the assessed market value compar comparisons. So um, we kind of went through that, but uh, 1459 Gordon Avenue, which is my property, which is 2984. Assessed values were in 2018, 440,000. 2020, 664,000. And then 2023, 742,000. The market rental values. In 2018, we were $147 per dollar per square foot. 2020, 222 square feet. And 2023, 248 square feet. 1436, 38, 40, 44 cordon. Plan area 6,000, or at least area 6,000. Assessed values were 918,000 in 2018. In 2020, 841,000. And in 2023, 1.243,000. A market value of $153 a square foot in 2018. In 2020, $140 a square foot. And in 2023, $207 a square foot. I'm 40. $38 or $37 higher than a building that you can assess at one36 uh, And mine is built residentially and built commercially. 1431 court and 5,800 square feet. 2,000 SAP values of 724. 2020, 813,000. And 2023, 1.336,000. A market value in 2018 of 124 square feet. In 2020, $140 a square foot. And in 2023, $230 a square foot. I'm higher than most. The two comparables that I'm just showing you here, my market value are much higher than buildings that are double the product value of mine. And my market, my market values are much higher than those. That doesn't make any sense to me. 1103 according is 2828. Assessed values of 302,000. 2020 was 359,000. 2023 was 446,000. The market values for 2018 were at $106 a square foot. 2020, $120, $26 a square foot, and 2023, $157 a square foot. An average per square foot of $203 a square foot. And I'm at $248 a square foot. Assessed market rent comparisons, 1459 Portland at 2,984 square feet, times $19. This is what their uh, assessed comparisons are. Our, our, our market rent is $19. It's an average rental value of $56,000. Minus the 14% equals $48,800 as an ARD. 1436 Corbin Avenue, 6,000 square feet times $7 a square foot. Average rental value of $103,000. Minus 14% gives you 88,000 as an average rental value in total. 1431 Corden Avenue, 5,800 square feet times $15.50 a square foot. 
Average rental value at $90 minus 14% equals a total of $78,000 average rental value. And 1103 for 1730 square foot times $21. An average rental value of 36,000 minus 14% total giving you a total of 31,000. This is what $21 would have had to be arrived at in order to, uh, to the, get after $447,000 value at 11 of three quarter. Based on the square footage that they provided in the business details. At twenty one dollars a square foot. There's something wrong here. You've got two buildings here that are worth 1.3, 1.2. You have a building that's worth four hundred forty thousand, assessed at four forty, and unassessed at seven forty two. And our average rental value per square foot is almost four to five dollars higher than these one point three million dollars. And I set market values based on income sum. 1459 Corden, average rental value 48,800 gives me a 6.5% capital. 1436 Corden Avenue, 88,000 gives a 7.2% cap rate. 1431 Corden Avenue, 78,000 has a 7% cap rate. And 1103. ARV 31,000 at a 7.1 percent cap rate. Now they sent me a rental income and expense. Yeah, so I got this like two days before the deadline, and they did that twice. They did it. Uh, uh, back in 2020, they gave me two days. I was out of town. I had to get my wife to um, fill this out. So, as you can see, it's not the most properly filled out income that you can ever see. So, page B, lease agreements. I have one with Spot and Panic that shows you the total gross rent, shows you the property taxes. Snow clearing, the maintenance, the management fees, the net rent, and it works up to ten dollars a square foot. Is what I'm collecting in my rent. Now this is, I think, when it comes to uh, land values, I think the environmental site assessment, I think, is an important uh, piece of evidence that I've provided to the board. And it shows on the executive summary that I provided at page nine or number nine. Uh, you see that? Mm -hmm. The IB Engineering Canada Incorporated was requested to perform a phase two sub versus environmental site assessment at 1459 Gordon Avenue. And this investigation may indicates hydrocarbon contamination. Based on these findings, the value of the property was worth only what I put into it. The Toronto Dominion Bank refused the finance we based on these findings, and potential buyers would be in conflict with these findings also. The only alternative is to remove the existing area would cost me only $300, more like 500 uh, So that they could see a 5% uh, rental value of 5 years I've had four different tenants, and in most cases, it took three to five months to lease the unit. I know it's at six percent, but I think it should be at seven percent. Uh, and of course, uh, the one thing I forgot to ask the appraiser uh, were the lockdowns not considered in, in, uh, in market rent lease agreements because I lost 25 percent of my income in 2021 because of lockdowns. Was that not? Uh, Use as uh, anything in, in income, the twenty five percent loss. But landlords, did you lose income? Yes, I did. Yeah. You can't reduce rents. I did. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, so I, I'm just surprised that was indicated in assessors. 
Uh, do you think he would have at least did some adjustment for, for, for lockdowns? Being reference here is 2021. I'm, I'm really shocked. I lost 25% of my income for five months. So I just want to go back to evidence nine, which is the IV Engineering Canada Incorporated. And then the assessment site currently undeveloped is reported to be a formal location of the textile service station. From 1952 to 1980, assessment site is within a residential commercial area. Residential properties bound the site to the north and the west underground utility building site, east, south, and west. Shallow groundwater at the assessment site appears to be two to four meters in depth. However, it does not appear to be a potential to be a potential use. The site was assessed to be a level one risk site based on non-total environmental guidelines. The 12 bore holes were advanced at the assessment site to depths between five and six meters. Organic vapor readings so of soil samples collected measured between less than 1 to 89% of LEL. Four soil samples submitted to a laboratory for an analysis of benzene, cooling, I'm going to have a little problem I'm also going to have a little consume, uh, BTEX, total extractable hydrocarbons, PEEPs. THH, total petroleum of hydrocarbons, and lead met criteria set for a level three risk site. Modern T wells were installed in three of the boreholes. Organic vapors measured in the wells ranged from less than one to 90% LEL. Three product was not observed in any of the wells. In two of the wells, groundwater recovery was observed to be relatively slow. A water sample collected from the well with good recovery was submitted to laboratory. Analysis of BTEX, TEH, TPH, and lead. The sample was reported to exceed the CCME guidelines for breath water, aquatic light, and total lead, benzene, and cumin. Comparison between the laboratory results and connected head spirits measurements and the observation made through during drilling and monitoring activities indicated hydro carbon contamination. Possibly nine of the floor holders and migrating predominantly in a southeast direction. So there's the evidence that my site is contaminated, and I 100% totally believe that would be a huge conflict in the sale of my property. Now, I have a market rental value proposed. And I kind of gave you guys a capitalization method definition. So the uh, market rental value, you can see that. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> the city of Winnipeg Property Assessment Department uses their direct capitalization method. This method, method converts a single year's projected income to, into a value asset. Capitalization rates are established by an analysis <laughs> sales of similar properties. The property incomes are divided by their sale prices to reduce capitalization rates. Since the capitalization rates include both a return on and a return of the investment, the rates typically vary the risk. Properties with good locations, good quality buildings, and good quality tenants have lower capitalization rates than properties with portal location buildings or tenants. So the market rental value, based on following the guidelines, I believe in fairness, market value, rental value, using the border revision path recommendation on the plan area being and the per dollar uh, market rent per square foot should be at 1475 five a square foot, a 2,584 square feet plan area. 
It's, it's a leasable area, like it was recommended by the board. And in fact, I averaged the per square feet. The board used 14 and roughly 15 something, and I averaged the total to 1475. So 1475 times 2584 gives me an ARV at 38,114,000. So when you do the proposed income approach summary, the total square feet, 2584, the rental value is $1,475 a square foot. Gross income is $38,114. I allowed a vacancy allowance of 7% at 26, $2,667, leaving it at $35,447. And then I added management fees at 5%, uh, $1,772. Other 2%, $708. Shortfall, $1,018. Net operating income is at $31,949. Capitalization rate of 80% when you compare all the comparables. And market value at $154 a square foot. And so I also gave the address of the uh, previous uh, revised uh, board revisions revision in 2020. Old recommendation. So, in conclusion, over the past 15 years, I've been as fair and just with the calculations for my asset values, following the guidelines under the definition of legislation, Act 1. I believe the calculations are accurate and do bear a fair and just relation to my comparisons. I presented past revised revisions to support my evidence and clearly showed the board of revisions past recommendations agrees with my numbers. Assessors comparable starting with the land comparables made it located on Cornell or in a reference 2014-15. I believe the reference year is supposed to be 2021. If that's the case, I wish to ask the board if I could use comparables from 2012 and maybe to 2005, because I can't find any buildings which have sold on Cornell near my location. Assessor also does not argue the fact nor does he produce any evidence in regards to the environmental site assessment, which clearly has a huge impact on the future sales of my property. I paid $102,000 for my property. The bank would not finance me. I had the previous owner to provide me with financing, a 10% interest rate. TD Bank told myself that it's only worth what I paid for, it, and they would not finance a contaminated site. My building costs are much lower and in most cases three times less built than most commonly built buildings, commercially built buildings. My buildings are completely finished. My parking lot is gravel and the design designed to look like it's a neighborhood surrounding. Cost of building is $45 a square foot. The Sussex comparables, comparables led located at 780, 782, and 784. He only gives you two of them. Cordon is a three unit building, strip mall, located in a highly populated and desirable area. These comparisons do not follow the guidelines. Location. This is not. Why didn't he use comparable rate beside them? Highly populated and desirable area. Tenex. Highly reputable companies. Long term. Building. Newer steel beams, black rooms, stainless steel windows, and doors, brick wall, big parking lots. All these characteristics would have an effect on the capitalization of the city. For some reason, the cap rates are at 7.5, the employment property is at 6.5. This does not follow the definition when determining capitalization rates. Properties with good locations, good quality current tenants, and good quality buildings have a lower cap rate, cap rate than a property with poor location building tenants. Let's look at the cap rates on my comparables if you include the thousand square feet not included in the assessed values of 11303 Gordon Avenue and 1500 square feet not included in the assessed value of 1431 Gordon. The cap rates on these properties would be at 8%. It's my understanding the assessor has lowered my value from 742 to 
All he has done is raise the cap rate from 6.5 to 7%. And cap rate market income the same. This is how the inspector can manipulate values without intentionally not following the guidelines set forth in Act 1, following the definition of determining capital, capitalization rates. I agree with the past board's recommendation having a plan area of 2584 per week and an annual rental value of $1,475 per foot, which is fair. And if you look at my evidence, it only makes sense that my cap rate be set at 8%. Reference year 2021 was the year of lockdown, which most landlords lost 25 percent of their income in order to keep their tenants. I see no evidence by the assertion that you know, takes this into consideration from calculating his income approach. Based on all my evidence, I provided number one, contamination, number two, loss of income, number three, assessors on third comparables do not follow the guidelines. Number four, capitalization rate. And following the definition, the cap rate is too low. My proposed income post summary follows the guidelines in spirit and just. I ask the board to revise my asset value to $399,362. This calculation is based on previous board recommendations and the evidence I have provided. Thank you. Okay, and Mr. Sessler, do you have any questions? Uh, no, sir, no questions. Okay, any questions? Just one of the combination. Now, do I understand you to say it would be difficult to rent your property or impossible? Sorry, difficult to sell your property or impossible to sell your property? I said difficult. Difficult, yeah. Because the conditions would deprive a director, deprive what could be built on that building. Yes, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, like. You you couldn't. It would cost you five hundred thousand if you wanted to be the building. Just just that's just the top of your head. Just the clean. That's off the top of your head, or do you have a quote? That's minimum. Do you have a quote? Uh, I know from previous gas station owners, uh, developers who own who bought uh, contaminated sites, they told me minimum was five hundred thousand because you have to store, you you collect all the fill. And you have to store it for years and years and years. I understand. Yeah. It's, you. it's a huge uh, amount of money. It's not cheap. Who for the questions? Yeah. Okay, Diane, any questions? Yeah, I have a couple of questions. On page 40 and 41, you show cap rates of 6.5 to 7.2, but yet you haven't shown proof of an 8% cap rate. Um, so are you trying to say that you want an 8% cap rate or do you want to go by the evidence that you've presented? I'm, I'm, I'm 8%, I'm using an 8% cap rate based on my, on the definition of capitalization rates. Okay. When you refer to my building, the comparables that I've used and that uh, the assessors use, uh, you can see that uh, two of the buildings are not including including uh, leasable uh, areas, and when you calculate do the calculation, they're at an eight percent cap rate. Yet these buildings are worth one point three million. Okay. Uh, they have longer tenants. They have uh, a more expensive building to build, and they have longer term leases. So when you do all that, yeah, I think I should be at eight percent from my okay. current. 80%. My other question is there's no date on the study that you presented in your evidence number nine. So do you have the full study with you with the date on that evidence? Uh, the date is probably two uh was probably 2002, I believe. And have you had a further study done on that property to see if it's clear now? No, the the so the cost of doing a site assessment is about a hundred thousand. Okay. So I'm not gonna spend a hundred thousand for I I I can I can assure you it's still contaminated because when we did piles, a few piles, we could smell contamination when we were doing the piles. Okay, that's all my questions. Thank you. Yeah, um so there was no remedial work done on the site, no your knowledge? No. So it's still as it was, yeah. And and you said that the uh, you can't get the conventional mortgage through through the bank. Oh no, 
it, it took me almost 10 years before I could get financing. I had, eventually I did because I paid off the land. And then the first building cost me, you can see it was 70,000. So by then I had collateral of my home. So I was using my house as collateral. Okay. But originally, no, I, I couldn't get my house. All right. So it would make it difficult for a buyer then to, at least in any complication for a buyer. Well, uh, when I bought it, I wasn't really aware of contamination, so I was quite happy to buy it at that low price. But it was previously sold through it actually had sold to a dent two dentists. And what happened was that it didn't tell who to this that reason. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, is there any uh, summary that uh, you wish to uh, have, Mr. Assessor? Uh no, sir. I believe that I uh I believe I had presented my case and that I did I did the recommended revised value of six hundred and twenty eight thousand um, dollars. According to my review, that seemed to be fair. But um, if the board feels different, that's at their prerogative. Okay. Uh, any summary you wish to give? Uh, well, I think I was. Yeah, I've been here longer than you want me here. All right, so thank you very much, and that concludes the, the, uh, this property. Um, now we'll just take a five minute uh, break and we'll bring to the uh, other property on the All right, thank you for your time. Thank you, Dr. Pearson. Yeah, so that. Mr. I'm going to put you in the weight room for that recess, and then I'll bring you back in when we are back. Okay, no problem. All right, we will uh, come back into session. Uh, next property on today's docket uh, is 585 St. Andrew. So, uh, can you do the swearing in? Madame Thompson, please state your full name. Donna Francis Thompson. You infer that the evidence you're about to give at this hearing is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. All right. Now, I understand we have a preliminary issue to deal with in that the uh, the applicant's uh, brief was submitted late. Um, so, Mr. Assessor, do you have any issue with accepting the applicant's brief? Into evidence? Uh, no, no, I have no issue. Okay. Okay. Uh, is there any interest in delivery? Or are you happy with uh, receiving sets? Are you happy with receiving the applicant's brief, uh, Diane? Yes. Okay. Then we will accept the applicant's brief. So if you can, if you start with pressure computers, you should have it. I just have to send it back. Oh, okay. All right. So you can proceed, Mr. Assessor. Okay. So the property we have, file number is 22 278. The applicant is Tommy's Welding Limited. Roll number 0802 099 The address is 585 St. Anne's Road. The 2023 assessment with a reference date of April 1st, 2021 has gone out at $774,000. Classification 60 other. And, oh, sorry. and then on my property description section, you can see that we have it listed as a CMRST as a retail store. Uh, one building, two premises on the, in the building. Uh, the land area is 15,298 square feet. And we have a leasable area of 2,560 square feet on file. So if you look at my page two for 585 St. Anne's Road, you can see the location of the property on the corner of St. Anne's and John Bruce Road. For the pictometry, we have the overhead view. So we have the uh, overhead view of the property showing the parcel. And the building itself in the bottom left corner. We have a north facing view of the parcel, followed by a west facing view of the parcel on page four. 
on page five, we have a Google Street View uh, map from the June 2019 map update. So it shows the approach of the parcel, the building that's on the parcel, and uh, on the uh, leaving of the parcel itself, passing by. We do have some uh, mailer uh, information that we have received from the applicant. We do have some sales history on the property. We have two sales listed, uh, one in 2004 and one in 2005. The most recent sale in 2005 was for $240,000. I have included some rent comparables uh, of some uh, typical market rents within the neighborhood. Um, and then I've also included some uh, so I had to put, uh, usually we reserve the 08 designation for um, unfinished basement spaces, which is what we have on the uh, income stream currently. Because it's hard to find uh, reliable market data on that, I had to put in C9, which would be fully finished basement space. So as we have no uh, 08 uh, uh, lower quality uh, basement space data available. So for that reason, the, uh, the rents that I'm showing here, it's just to show an example of finished basement space, but by no means am I implying that this should be the rental rates that's on the 08 uh, income stream or on the 08 premise that we have on the income stream. It's just to show an example of some market data on some basement rental rates that are being uh, received. Uh, following that on page eight, I have included some land comparable sales. The reason why is because the assessment on this property had gone out at land only value. It had not gone out on the income value approach. So we did go that 774 was a land value um, that it had that the assessment had gone out at. So I did put in some land comparable sales just to show uh, within the neighborhood some different land comparables. Uh, we, sh we see a range there from $36.68 a square foot from the first comparable all the way up to uh, as high as $50.73 a square foot on the second, and then there's a range from there. So we do have an excess land calculation on the, um, on the subject property. Uh, so you can see that I have done a rough uh, outline using our, um, our tools that we have here at the office to show that there is a, a quite a large section of the uh, parcel that is, has not been developed. So within our records, we do have a total parcel area of 15,298 square feet. We have a model value on that of $50.57 a square foot. And within our income stream, we do have an excess land calculation that has been entered as 50% of the total parcel land or 7,649 square feet at the model value of $50.57 a square foot, which gives us a uh, rounded $387,000. So that 387 is an excess land value that's being put on top of the, um, of the income stream. So we do have an income stream on the property. Originally, we had it gone out for the 2023 assessment at, um, we have two premises. We have one main floor C2 premise at 1,280 square feet. We have $14.57 per square foot on that premise. And we also have an 08 substandard basement premise put on the income stream as well, same size, 1,280 square feet, and we have a nominal rent rate of $2.63 a square foot. We do have the um, uh, model uh, parameters put on the, uh, on the vacancy of 6%. We have an expense rate of 3%, a shortfall of $7. And then we have put a cap rate of 7.05% on it. So if you look at that, that gives us a capitalized value of 269,489. And then there's also an additional land value, that excess land value of $387,000, which is being placed on the income stream. So that actually gives us a income stream um, value of $656,000. So from there, we have an income value summary uh, on page 11. And then on page 12, we have a, a, our standard capitalization rates information for this uh, current assessment period that we're speaking of. Uh, we have some Municipal Assessment Act excerpts on page 13. And then I have included the uh, mailer from the 2020 year uh, into the brief as well. So we can see some information there on some of the um, income received by the property. And then from there, we continue on with the mailer um, up to page 18 with the information from there, and then page 19 to 
20 are the assessment and taxation COVID-19 supplemental questionnaire that was also received uh, by the department. And I just wanted to um, also speak to the board that I have spoken with the uh, applicant and because we had sent the assessment out at land value, I was able to originally offer a revised recommendation based on our income stream valuation of the property. So I did offer a recommendation of $656,000 from our original assessment of 774. But from there, I was also able to do some extra work and I was able to make some adjustments, uh, some further adjustments on the income stream. Uh, and I did convey to the applicant that I am able to offer a revised value of $604,000. Right, what's that $604,000 based on? So what I did was is I took the um, income and expense information and I took the overall income received. From there, I calculated a new rental rate that was put on. Oh, uh, you know what? I could also apply. Uh, sorry, just give me a second here because I didn't open it up. I remember typically when I would do the board um, hearings in person, I would have a copy of the rec that I would uh, hand out to the board. So I believe this is a little bit of a different system now with the virtual, but I can describe it to you here. Um, so I did use a rental rate on the main floor of $11.39 from what we had of $14.57. And that was based on some of the information received or on the information received in the uh, in the income and expense mailer for the 2020 year. So I did make an adjustment on that to $11.39. And then we have the other nominal rental rate of $2.63 for the 08 basement. And then we have the same model parameters, which gives us the new revised value of $604,000. Okay, and uh, how do you feel about the uh, revised value then? That question is directed to me? Yes. This is still excessive. And um, one correction I would like to bring forth, the tenancy, the rental tenancy board has certain guidelines that must be met. I noticed that he is treating the mechanical room, the basement as another building. The basement does not have an entrance. It does not have an exit where you could rent it as an- Your um, evidence later then, if you, uh, if you don't, there's uh, no reason you have to accept the 604,000 and we'll just proceed with, with the hearing now. So no, I don't, I don't accept that. That's, in, um, that's excessive um, of what, What's afforded? We will then proceed uh, with the hearing. Uh, is there anything you wish to add, Mr. Assessor? Uh, no, sir. I believe I uh, laid out all the information there on the property from what I had to work with, and um, that's my that would be my presentation. Okay. Uh, now, uh, Ms. Thompson, do you have any questions of the assessor? My question would be, how do you define the rentable space? Uh, so the rentable space for myself, it would be defined as space that is finished and that is able to have a tenant into the, um, to be occupying the space and, uh, and operating out of it. Mm -hmm. um, so and I did, wanna, I did want to address that the, um, the basement space is not being considered as a separate building it's a premise on the income stream. So there, it's basically accounting for the basement space as being usable to the business itself. And so because we have to put a value on it, we put a nominal rental rate of $2.63 per square foot on the basement space. But I just wanna be clear, it is not considered a separate building. It's a premise within the building. Okay, fair enough. Um, not that I totally agree because um, the basement is only a mechanical room with storage space, which is factored in the overall rent, as you can see in the tenancy verification form that's submitted. It's just one rent that's received. 
Another thing I notice, um, and where you use your comparables, you use the entire city. And okay. I, I know that location, immediate vicinity yeah. is used to determine value. 585 is located beside a trailer park. You have gone from north to south, east to west, as close as the airport to present your value. Why wow. didn't you? Why didn't you show the immediate buildings and their value? Well, I'm not sure if I necessarily agree with the characterization that I uh, went all over. Uh, if you look at my, let me just bring up your brief here. If you look at my market data for the income stream for the rental rates. Uh, the information does stay within the area, Tache, St. Mary's, Tache, St. Anne's, St. Anne's. And then for the 08 basement spaces, I did speak to the fact that it's very difficult to find market data information for substandard basement spaces. So I had to use the information that we had on file, but I do speak to the fact that these are just rates to show what a finished space would look like. It's not meant to imply that these are the rental rates that should be used for the basement space. So it might be a little bit difficult to understand, but we actually don't have information on every single business that you can think of. So if you point your finger across the street and say, why didn't you use the information from that business? The reason why we didn't is because perhaps we don't actually have the information from the income and expense mailer that has been submitted. We might have gross rental rates that were submitted. We might have rental rates that aren't applicable to the apples to apples comparison that we use. So the, the reason why I had that data put in is because I'm trying to use net rental rates that have been uh, uh, verified to be net rents. So it's based on market data. That's the reason why sometimes you get buildings that are nearby and sometimes you get buildings that are further away because it's based on the available data that we have based on lease rental agreements. But it also defeats the purpose. Because Not really. It shows market data. If you put a, a house that's worth a million dollars in an area that the retail or the sale value is 300, that compromises the value immediately. So, well, that can be hypothetical, uh, but hypothetical isn't comparable please, to what we're speaking no, about. No, please allow me to speak. If we're doing comparable, if we're doing comparable, you should be more specific and realistic, not generalizing the entire city. We're, we're going beyond questioning into your, your organization. I'm definitely not comfortable with that, but I just want to end off by saying that the land comparables were all within the neighborhood. 567 St. Anne's Road, 1585 St. Mary's Road, 67 St. Anne's Road, 878 St. Mary's Road. So I really don't appreciate the characterization that I took from all over the city. It was only for the 08 finished basement spaces, and I very clearly stated that the reason was is because it was the market data that we had available. All the other information is within the neighborhood. I want to be very clear about that. Okay, now that I've brought to your attention, because we spoke and you mentioned that in the future, we might be able to erect a building that will capture the cost to pay the taxes. And it was at that point I mentioned to you, which you weren't even aware of, that the city's infrastructure was not designed to embrace that. I further stated, which I have presented, the project that we presented and from the initial stage, from the inception, the city was engaged of our intentions and our plans. We met several times. We had a team of architects, engineers, surveyors, project managers. Uh, this is just only the period where you're asking questions of the assessor. So you're not uh, presenting evidence at this point. So do you have any more questions of the assessor? Well, having received what um, the conversation we had, have you factored that in your calculations? 
Um, when we had the conversation, we were speaking about the excess land value and the land value overall that was placed. So you're characterizing this in a very interesting way. I had mentioned to you that the reason why that the assessment went out at land value was because essentially the model isn't factoring in your building. So the model is saying if this property was on the market today, what would a reasonable uh, uh, buyer be able to purchase for this property on St. Anne's Road? So that's the reason why we spoke about that. And in regards to your specific question about the uh, knowing on the permits and the redevelopment issues, I didn't receive your your uh, evidence until two days ago, if not yesterday. I'm not aware. The city is a big organization. What you're probably talking about is planning and property in the permits department, which has nothing to do with my work. Um, so I do valuation work. So these are separate departments. So I was I was not aware, and I wasn't aware until just yesterday in the evidence that was submitted that there was even an issue with that. No, we had a conversation and I mentioned to you when you said to me that in time to come, you might erect a building that is over 700,000. And then I said, to, I said to you that- Okay, we're, we're yes, in I would, I would be able I to do that. I have no information. You can say those things, but if it's not... No, but then... Bring it, bring it to order, please. We're, we're getting out of the questioning. Um, we'll proceed. I, but, I, just, I just want to say one thing, but because he's denying that he's not aware. That's when he said that. I wasn't aware of that. Now I know this. Let me go on a recording. So don't come and say you're not aware today. You might not have had the documentation but you are given the information. You, you will have a chance to make your presentation uh, after your questions. Uh, so Richard, do you have any questions about the assessor and the value? Did you visit the property, sir? I didn't visit the property, no, not physically. So I did all the information I did from my desk. I did a Google Street View map. I looked at our pictometry, all the latest information we had. Thank you. Okay, uh, Diane, do you have any questions? Any no, no questions at this time. Uh, and I have no questions. So, Ms. Thompson, you can proceed with your presentation. Can I just ask a question of that presentation? Do we have it somewhere? Yes, it should have been sent to you. Uh, no, uh, you might need to refresh your SharePoint link, it's all. Oh, okay. Okay, just one, just give me a moment then. Ah, I got it now. Okay. Okay, so Ms. Thompson, you can proceed with your presentation. Thank you. And um, I just want to thank you for accepting my late submission. Of course, I'm a civilian trying to navigate my way through the system. So it was not deliberate, but I do appreciate you accepting it. I received um, the assessment in the amount of um, over 700,000, 774,000 to be exact for the property at 585 St. Anne's Road. When I looked at that, I recognized that the property tax was more than even the income. So I reached out to the authority and asked to have this meeting and I do appreciate you giving of your time this morning. I will be as brief as possible because the information speaks for itself. I also submitted a Google map showing the, the premises. What um, we currently have in um, at the location, it's, um, it's a standalone building with access, main access to the main level and the basement being a mechanical storage area. So it's not conducive to 
rent this separately. So whosoever um, I'm renting this property to, it has to be as one property because um, the access and the different requirement to rent this as two property would, we would not meet the standards. Before the pandemic, we engage this city on our proposal to build a five-story building pro to provide 32 units to spread over four upper floors and care for 40 seniors who would require assisted living. The main floor would host a communal recreation and dining space for the residents. The second, third, fourth, and fifth floor would have eight units per floor that are all fully wheelchair accessible. And on each floor, there are six single bedroom apartments, one bachelor suite, and one bedroom apartment. The property is zoned C2 commercial community, community which permits assisted living facilities. And um, our proposal is well within the setback and floor area ratio requirements. Zoning setbacks for C2 properties do not require front and side yard setbacks. However, we took into consideration the impact of our proposal and, and also the impact it would have to our neighbors. So it would be, the, we have situated the building 20 feet from the north property line and 16 feet four inches from the south property line. A rear setback of 48 feet is provided which exceeds the minimum 25 feet. The increased setbacks are used to provide more landscaping, green space, parking, and alleviate the impact on the neighbors. So um, we met with the city and we presented all this proposal. Of course, um, we engage our architect, engineers, surveyors. There was constant dialogue between the city and my team, resulting in the drawings I sent because um, one of the drawings, there was a, a requirement um, to reduce the height to accommodate, there was also variance to accommodate the project. I sent the variance up, um, cost where we paid for the variance and it was granted. We also had opposition from the trailer park that was heard by the city council and we were successful with that. So. We were confident that we had the green light to move along because we had all the professionals, all the city planning personnel engaged. So we were working along this. Unfortunately, This came out, and as a surprise to everyone, that the city does not have the ability, the infrastructure to accommodate the wastewater. And um, I'm not sure what order you have um, the evidence I sent but this um, I printed from correspondence from the city to my to my one of my engineers, and the response in red, email dated May 7th, 2019. The response in red is from the city. Of course, um, the catchment. Um, area 
identifies from Bishop Grandin and um, if you are familiar with the Oatly of what we are talking about, this is over a block from where the property is. And uh, the bottom line is after several conversation, we would be required to do what the city is expected to do, but then it would become the city's property. I reached out to our deputy mayor to see if he could intervene in this and um, only to learn that our dream was not the only one shattered by the city, but others who presented proposal for development and businesses on St. Anne's Road was also denied because of the same reason. So today I ask, because we are crippled by the city because of the lack of infrastructure, we cannot develop, we are stuck with this little building on the property, but yet it is assessed without any leniency or consideration being given that we will not realize that gain until the city put the proper infrastructure in place to embrace development. And with that, I'm asking if a significant, fair, realistic reduction could be given based on the building that's now on a property that technically is dormant because you cannot um, move forward in any form of development until the proper infrastructure is in place. Thank you. Okay, so can I ask then what would be a, a fair valuation of your property then, in your opinion, and uh, can you describe how we would uh, get to that valuation? When I came to this meeting, I, I did not present a, a, I did not present a valuation, but what I will mention in 2018, It was um, proposed at 756 and um, we sought the intervention of the Board of Revision and it was reduced to 516. At this stage, even that is still high and I, I do not expect to I know that one has to pay taxes, but I will rely on the discretion of the board with having presented and knowing the facts for a reasonable calculation. Okay, uh, Mr. Assessor, do you have any uh, questions of the applicant? I do have a question. Uh, Mrs. Thompson, uh, when you mentioned in your, um, in your presentation that you'd spoken to the city and that they had denied your ability to uh, build a multi-tenant uh, unit on the property, um, my question is, is, have you looked at any other forms of redevelopment? Have you looked at perhaps redeveloping within the same C2 uh, zoning that the property is currently uh, zoned under? Perhaps just something similar to what's there, but in a different manner? Um. It's not designed, that's the problem. It is sewer and any building you have, you're going to have waterways and sewer. If it's a restaurant, I'm not able to think of a building that I can erect that will not require waterways. Okay, thanks. No further questions. Hey, Diane, any questions of the applicants? Yeah, I do. So are you saying that that building is sitting there totally vacant right now with no income stream at all? 
No, it is not vacant, but it's, um, as you can see from the Google map, the building is, um, it's a very small building and the, the income based on um, the, let me just be specific, the city did provide the, what was submitted from um, the 2020 20 property income and expenditure questionnaire. Yes. The, the net operating income was $73 after everything was calculated. And um, this was very conservative because this is in if this is in the negative. So, so how did you have expenses of twenty nine thousand then? Pardon me. How did you have total expenses of twenty nine thousand on that property? Property taxes alone is eighteen thousand of that breakdown. Right, and then you've got other expenses of yeah. nine thousand. Right. So um, remember the development, the cost for the engineer, the cost for to do the survey, the cost for the variance, the cost for. So um, those costs were maintenance because uh, maintenance is um, part of the, mm -hmm. the responsibility of the landlord. The furnace, um, the furnace, the HVAC. So, so, um, so just let me ask this question. So you took all the expenses of the proposed new building and added it into the expenses here, and that's how you come have a no, net no. operating expense of $73. No, no, no. Um, this, um, this does not capture all the expense because um, okay. it, um, this, um, the 9,836, yes. that would be the HVAC, the, um, the furnace and the heating system. Okay. So uh, the proposed, and that's why I mentioned that this would be in the deficit if I were to factor all those um, mm -hmm. put development. Okay, got it. Thank mm -hmm. you. Yeah. Okay, was that all your questions, Diane? Yes, thanks. Richard, any questions? No questions, thank you. Okay, I have no questions. Um, so... Uh, um, that concludes the evidence on this property then. Um, uh, and we have heard all the items scheduled and this uh, hearing is uh, now adjourned. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat>